When it comes to my gear, all I want is for it to work and not frustrate me. That's why I chose the camera that I have, that's why I chose the laptop that I have, and that's why I've chosen the SSD that we're installing and reviewing today. Now, in order to make this installation as smooth as possible, what I've done is I bought an SSD enclosure for the new drive to go into, and I plug it in by USB, and that's how we're gonna clone my current drive. First thing we're gonna do is open these up. We'll start with the SSD enclosure and see what comes in the box. So let's see here. We've got a little USB cable, USB-C, which is nice. Another USB-C to USB-C cable over here. We've got a couple little, what looks like mounting clips, I guess. Some documentation. And here we have the enclosure itself. As you can see, it's pretty small. And when you pull off the eject, oh, there we go. This opens up and there's your SSD connection. Now let's check out the uh, Samsung SSD over here. And it's just basically, there's your SSD. I love these things because they're so tiny. So this part should be simple enough. We take this out. And these are probably in lieu of the mounting screws. So we're just gonna We'll stick that back in there, put this guy back on, and we're ready to go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the SSD and we're gonna start the transfer using Samsung's uh, data migration tool. So just to give you guys an idea on the progression, after about seven minutes and 50 seconds, we are at 59%, so it's going pretty quick over the uh, Thunderbolt cable. So we're just finishing up right now. The system's about to restart in a few seconds. Interesting thing to note, it took about 19 minutes total, um, but it hit the 99% mark around the 14 minute mark. So just something to keep an eye out. If you're doing this installation yourself, uh, don't think that it froze or anything. Just be patient for a few minutes and it should be fine. So that's pretty much it. Now we are ready to begin the physical installation of the drive. We're just gonna turn everything off one thing I didn't mention before, just be careful when you're using one of these, is the enclosure does get hot if you're transferring large amounts of files. So keep that in mind, place it somewhere safe, and uh, try not to touch it because uh, it will burn your hands. Now you will need some basic tools and or a toolkit. I highly recommend if you're gonna do work like this, buying one of these guys off Amazon. It's got basically everything you need. So a little mini screwdriver with all the various bits for uh, pretty much any screw you can encounter while doing work on a laptop. One little tip I have for you guys while doing something like this is there are gonna be a lot of screws that you're gonna remove. So I highly recommend as you remove them, leave them on the table right next to the laptop in exactly the spot of their holes and you should make sure not to lose any of them because Here is the SSD and all we got to do is remove that, replace it by that little guy and we're done. It pops up, you just pull it out and you put in the new guy right there and that's it. We're pretty much done. So as you can see, it physically installing the SSD is pretty straightforward as long as you get all these screws out and then remember where each one goes afterwards. So let's get the panel back on and the screws back in and see if uh, I broke my computer or not.
So here are the results side by side guys. Performance wise, the 980 is lower on the read side, but higher on the write side. And while typically you won't really notice this in real world use, I do wonder if something like encoding a video or working with other larger files in terms of saving them will be faster with the 980. So because the Asus Zephyrus that I'm using has a tendency to run a little bit hot and the 980s also are known to run a little bit hot, I decided to check the temperature after those performance tests. And interestingly, it's now up to 62 degrees Celsius. So that's something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on. I may decide to install some thermal pads there to help uh, cool the drive down a little bit. If you guys wanna see a video on how to do that, leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, just something for you guys to keep in mind if you're considering this drive that it does run a little bit hot. So in case you guys were wondering, I did in fact install the thermal pads on the SSD and now we're running at 30 degrees Celsius right after startup. I'm going to run the performance tests again and see how much the temperature rises. So as you can see, after the performance tests, we're now running at 49 degrees Celsius, whereas before we were running at 62 without the thermal pads. So a pretty significant difference in the temperature of the SSD. So if you're going to install one of these Samsung 980s, I highly, highly recommend getting some thermal pads to go along with it. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something and it made your decision on the Samsung SSD 980 easier if you're considering one. Um, please consider subscribing, consider liking the video if you did get something out of it and I'll see you in the next one.